Hey guys, I'm Zoltan from Phalanx Miniatures, welcome back to the channel. In the last video I painted the blood red armor of Karn the Betrayer, you can check it out here if you haven't seen it yet. And today I will be painting the bronze colored trim around the edges of his armor in non-metallic metal. Let's do it! I wanted a bronze old gold look that is quite saturated and orangish to have a nice contrast with the armor. The usual colors I use starting from a brown to a yellow produce a pale gold effect and that won't cut it here, so I try the transition from very dark orange to a whitish yellow. To make it look metallic, we need to keep two very important things in mind. One, high contrast between the shadows and the highlights, and two, highlighting all the edges. I started the process by base coating the whole trim with dark sea blue, leaving almost none of the black primer behind. I thought that the greenish tone would contrast nicely with the orangish bronze, plus I was planning to add a word degree effect later, which would synchronize nicely with it in the shadows. I started the actual metal with medium rust, which I recently discovered to be the perfect starting point for any reddish non-metallic metal. I applied it on almost the whole surface, except the extreme shadows where I left some of the dark sea blue behind. This will serve as the majority of our mid-tone, the actual color of the armor, with the dark sea blue serving as the shadows and any brighter colors as the highlights. In areas facing up, I highlighted almost the whole surface of the trim, and in areas facing away from the light, I left more of the dark sea blue intact. But no matter whether in the light or in the shadows, I made sure to highlight all the edges with this color, even the ones facing away from the light, since the light would be bouncing off the ground, and metallic edges facing that would be still brighter than the surrounding area. At this point it is not important to make the edge highlights super thin, since we will be covering them later with brighter colors, but they can't be too thick either, otherwise the end result won't look like light reflections. Ideally try to not make the line thicker than the actual edge. It is also important to keep areas with strong light close to areas with dark shadows, this will help sell the metallic effect because of the strong contrast between them. On this armor the studs sticking out of the trim actually help me with this, since I can leave their bases dark. Having a strong light around them, dark shadows at their base and then another strong light on the tip of the studs is perfect for what I want to achieve. I used light rust as my first highlight. Depending on the size of the surface, it can be worth mixing the light rust and the medium rust and use that color first instead of jumping to light rust immediately, so the transition is smoother. But on a very small surface, it won't really make much of a difference, so it depends how much time you want to invest. This is the first time I really need to worry about the light placement on the trim, since so far we were painting all the edges and most of the surface. But with this color I start to be more selective and more conscious where I use it and how big I want the highlight to be. The light placement is much less complicated than it might look if you have never tried non-metallic metal before. Upper facing surfaces should have bigger and brighter highlights, all the edges should be highlighted as thinly as possible. Downward facing edges should be only highlighted once or twice, while upward facing ones should go up to close to white. Highlights should be placed next to shadows to push contrast. Thin edge highlights are essential here, for example on the typical corn helmet, horns or ears jutting out of the side of his head, if you can manage to leave a dark inner section between the two edges of the trim, even though the whole section is less than a millimeter thin, it will sell the effect due to the high contrast it creates. With a little practice, using the side of the brush and the right paint consistency, it is easier than it looks. What works for me is to use the paint with very little dilution, pick off the excess on a paper towel, twisting the brush while doing so, making sure that I have a nice tip and all the bristles are aligned. Then use the side of the brush running it along the edge multiple times until it is properly highlighted. The amount of pressure on the brush is essential here as well. The more pressure you exert, the more paint is going to leave the brush. Light touches will make sure that the line is nice and thin on the edge. It is better to do multiple thin passes than a single one that results in a thick line that won't look like a reflection at all. The 
Once I went through all of the trim, I switched to a mix of light rust and ice yellow for the next highlight. Ice yellow has quite a bit of white pigment, which will start to desaturate our highlight color while brightening it up, but it also contains yellow, which counteracts this effect, so it is not as bad as using something like ivory or pure white. I repeat what I did with the pure light rust, but focusing on smaller surfaces and less on the downward facing parts and edges. It can be a bit tedious to do the same step with lighter and lighter colors, but at the same time it is super rewarding as the effect starts to come together. Plus, every highlight step gets faster and faster as you have to paint a progressively smaller and smaller surface and less and less of the edges. followed up with pure ice yellow, doing the same thing, but concentrating only on the parts and edges facing the light and making sure that ice yellow is only used on some of the edges, which I wanted to be really bright. It is important as we move up to almost white with the highlights that we maintain the same steps, highlighting on a smaller and smaller surface within the already established highlight zones and highlighting the edges. The only difference is the surface area we cover on both of the trim surface and the edges. In the footage you might notice that I tend to switch to smaller brushes as I go up with the highlights. The brightest highlights should be on super small surfaces and our final edge highlights should be the thinnest we can make them. These colors will stand out the most on the mini so we can't afford to make them sloppy. The hardest part of non-metallic metal is getting the brightness right. If you don't bring up the highlights to almost white, the material won't look reflective enough to look like metal. The funny thing is that if you make your highlights too bright, it will also kill the metallic effect. The trick is to shoot for the sweet spot between those two extremes. If you do it for the first time, you will most likely fail a couple of times, but don't worry, you will get it right eventually and it will be worth it. Correcting mistakes is also easier than you would think. Are your highlights too bright and the whole thing looks too white and washed out? Apply some glazes with your mid-tones, the medium and light rust in this case, and bring back some of the color. Is the armor not bright enough? Increase the size of your highlights a bit or add more close to white colors in the highlights, like ivory. As my final highlight, I mixed in some ivory into the ice yellow and used it super sparingly only on the most prominent edges and in the middle of some of the brightest highlights. I usually add a couple of dots of pure white as well in the end to give it a bit of a glint, uh, but I couldn't find the footage so I guess I did it off camera at some point, uh, I'll do better next time. Finally, I apply the verdigris to sell the old bronze effect. I watered down some turquoise paint heavily and let it pool under the rivets of the trim and some of the crevices. Then I did the same with progressively lighter greenish blue colors and smaller amounts so that the darker patches show up around them. Here is the final result. I 
hope you guys found some inspiration painting your own non-metallic metal. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you like the content, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. And see you in the next one where I will be painting skulls for the skull throne.